This is Brian Glies with the Scott Insurance Agency. The topic of this video is workers' compensation and how to make it work for you. One of the questions that is always asked, do I need workers' compensation? State laws set workers' compensation requirements state by state. We, however, have a much simpler point of view on this. If you have one employee, you should carry workers' compensation. The facts are is that the cost of the workers' compensation policy premium will be less than the cost of you being liable for all costs in relation to that employee's injury. Let the expert at your work comp carrier work with your employee and guide them on setting up their medical visits, rehabilitation, paying their lost wages, and paying their medical bills so you're not liable for those items. How is work comp priced? It's important to know there's three major components to your work comp premium. The first one is the class code. The work that your employees do determines their class code. A drywaller's class code will be different than a roofer's class code. A clerical worker's class code will be different than a driver's class code, so on and so on. Each class code will have its own price per $100 in payroll. Knowing the price you pay for the $100 in payroll can help you predict what effect changes in your workforce will have on your workers' compensation premium. Many times, multiple class codes are used on the same policy with payroll divided between those class codes. If your payroll or tracking system does not break down payroll for each class code, the price used will default to the highest rated class code. That's very important. This mainly comes into play if one employee does activities that fall into multiple class codes. An example, you have an employee that does roofing for four hours and then switches to painting for four hours. You must have those hours split out by class code in your payroll software to take advantage of painting being at a lower rate than roofing. Check with your work comp provider on their rules and splitting out payroll between class codes for an individual employee. Payroll is the second portion of this. The payroll is multiplied by the class code price to determine the premium paid. This information allows you to forecast the impact of hiring new employees. Determining the class code for the new employees, multiply that class code's price per 100 by the new employee's payroll, and you'll have a good idea of what your work comp policy will change or how it will change. When you start a work comp policy, in many cases, you're asked to project your payroll for the entire year to determine your annual premium. At the end of the policy period, the work comp company will perform an audit. If your payroll was higher than projected, the audit will result in additional premium. If the payroll was lower than projected, the audit would result in a refund of premium. If you anticipate large fluctuations in your payroll, make sure you contact your insurance broker. Payrolls can be adjusted during the policy year. These adjustments can help reduce the impact of an audit at the end of the year. Ask your carrier if they offer a pay-as-you-go option. Pay-as-you-go does require more administrative work on your end due to the monthly reporting requirements. However, pay-as-you-go can eliminate negative audits since the monthly reporting payroll minimizes those fluctuations that you might see in your payroll. A lot of my employers find benefit in that. If you have a slower time period, you actually pay less for your workers' compensation because there's not as much payroll going out. If you have an insanely busy section, your premium for your work comp will increase. However, you don't have to worry about that increase coming at the tail end of your policy via an audit. So the third thing that's built into that price is what's called an experience modification factor. We call it an EMOD. You earn an EMOD over time. If you're a new business, your EMOD factor will be a one. One is the starting point. An EMOD lower than one, an example would be a 0.89, means that you will pay less for your work comp policy than you would if you had an EMOD of one. 
An E mod higher than one, a 1.25, means that you'll pay more for coverage than if your E mod was at a one or lower. And like I said, in most cases, everyone starts at a one. If you have good work practices that result in little to no claims, your experience modifact modification factor over time will go below one, which will equate to lower premiums. This factor is made to reward employers that promote safe work practices. If you're competing for a job with one of your competitors, the fact that your EMOD is lower than theirs may allow you to price your bid more competitively. The EMOD is a long game strategy and crucial to the most successful business owners. So how do I keep my rates low? This is more about your business practices than anything else. Keeping a consistent focus on safe work practices and have safe work practices in place rolling every single day. Have a zero tolerance drug policy. Have a seatbelt policy, cell phone use policy. Use regular safety meetings. Insist on the use of personal protective equipment. Inspect your equipment for proper function and that all safety guards are in place. Not sure where to start? Most work comp companies will have sample policies for you to use. Work companies will have loss control representatives that they will send to your job sites and help you develop safety plans. Many work comp companies will have online resources that will provide pre-made videos or toolbox talks already made for your use. We suggest you have a dedicated safety officer as part of your team. All of the above items are generally free. You must take the time to ask your carrier for the help, and equally important is your willingness to implement those items for safe work practices. Claims do happen. At some time, someone's going to get injured. Discuss the claim process with your work comp carrier before any claims. If a claim are to happen, take the necessary emergency medical actions needed. Notify your agent and work comp carrier as soon as possible. Your work comp carrier will help you direct the medical care of your employee. Your policies and procedures that you have in place can and will influence your claims. If you have a seatbelt policy in place and it's signed by the employee and that employee was not wearing their seatbelt during an accident, the work comp carrier will reduce the employee's benefits for not following company policy. Now that might seem strange, but we want your employees, number one, to follow company policy, and we also want to keep your claims as low as possible to help for future experience modification factors and premium increases. Audits, audits are a real thing. An audit is possibly the most frequent communication that I get from an underwriter, and that's that your client hasn't completed their audit. If you don't do your audit, the insurance company will simply increase your rates by approximately 25% because you have not completed the info to verify the premium accuracy that they're charging. Audits can be painful if you do not update your payroll as fluctuations happen. Keep accurate payroll splits if you have an employee that falls under multiple class codes and keep certificates for any subcontractors that you use showing that they carry workers' compensation. Subcontractors are used frequently and they have an effect on your workers' compensation. If you carry workers' comp and use a subcontractor, the subcontractor must carry their own workers' compensation policy. If your sub does not carry a workers' comp policy, your work comp company will charge you for workers' compensation for that sub as if they were your employee. If you subcontracted a roofer, the work comp company is going to add to your payroll at a roofer's class code for what you paid that subcontractor. When you hire a sub, you will want to ask them for a certificate of insurance showing work comp before you pay them, guys, that is the time to get the certificate. I've seen it too often where we just have the job done, we chase the certificate after the fact, they didn't have the insurance and it didn't do any good. You will take the sub certificate 
and provide it to your work comp company during the annual audit so the amount you paid the sub will not affect your audit. If you are hiring the sub, it is your responsibility to ensure they carry workers' compensation and obtain that certificate. Don't be the business owner that scrambles calling their subs, begging them to get a certificate of insurance because you have an audit on Tuesday. Um, we see that happen a lot too. But the effect of subcontractors on your workers' compensation is real. Don't let it catch you by surprise. So see, it's as easy as that. <laughs> Success with work comp is all in the planning. It does not happen by accident. The work comp company can be one of your most significant sources of information and help. All you have to do is to reach out to them and use the resources that they make available to you. Have physical safety talks with your employ employees. Put policies and procedure manuals in place that include employee signatures. Make sure your payroll processing system is one that can provide you the necessary audit documentation. Keep those certificates of insurance for your subs in your highly organized insurance file. Thank you, thank you, thank you for your time. I appreciate you. Visit our Facebook page, visit our website, visit our YouTube channel. Here's my email address that you can hit me with an email. Workers' compensation is an important tool for my business owners. It's also an expensive tool. By using the strategies that we've discussed in this video, you can continue to drive your prices down and keep those prices lower than your competitors and use it to your advantage. We'd be happy to work with you and show you how to do that. Thank you again for your time. Have a great day. Bye-bye.